Good morning. We welcome all parishioners from our Basilica Parish and other parishes, all visitors and all those on live stream who have come to worship with us today at this historic Basilica Cathedral of St. John the Baptist. We hope that you will find hospitality and a friendly welcome among us. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, we are glad you are here and hope that you come back again. We all have different stories and gifts, and we invite you to share yours with us and allow us to share ours with you. The doors of our parish and our hearts are open to you. We ask all present to please respect the guidelines in place to prevent the spread of COVID-19, including using hand sanitizers and maintaining a social distance of two meters. We encourage the wearing of masks. We will not have a collection at this mass, but there are collection boxes provided for you at the entrances and exits of the church, or you can donate online at the parish website or return your envelopes to the parish office to obtain a tax receipt. Thank you for continuing support as your donations help us with the daily operations of the Basilica. At the time of Holy Communion, further instructions will be given, and at the end of Mass, we ask that you please follow the usher's instructions for exiting the church. Our presider today is Father Cecil Critch, and our opening hymn this morning can be found in your Catholic Book of Worship, number 475, God Whose Glory Reigns Eternal. Would you kindly stand? Thank you. <clears throat> Whose glory reigns eternal, spanning space as well as time. Show us signs in seed and kernel, life potential, hope sublime. Grant us insight, all discerning, seeing truth beyond bare fact. Love translating all our learning into power to be and act. In Christ's healing, touch and teaching, we see life as you intend. Selfless love to others reaching, pain and brokenness to end. And when hungry folk are nourished, filled by hope, and word and bread these are signs your reign has flourished and from bondage we are led now we ponder life's great mystery suffering savior cross enthroned past and future in one history our mortality Christ owned. And as resurrection's glory shines into the empty tomb, we can tell the ancient story, joy dispelling all the gloom. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, with your spirit. and welcome all of you today. Certainly welcome all of our visitors too from different parts of the world who are visiting our beautiful city and this beautiful cathedral basilica. Uh, in the front there's a little symbol there of the tree, and it's a symbol this year of uh, the season of creation which began on September 1st to October 4th this year, every year. Pope Francis has put that as a season of creation. So maybe today for our penitential rite we reflect on how we have treated our environment. You know, we've all sinned against our environment. For the times we have failed to protect our environment, for the times we have not really appreciated God's creation, 
we ask the Lord's forgiveness. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth praise to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, stony begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the most. I, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. For who can learn the counsel of God? Or who can discern what the Lord wills? For the reasoning of mortals is worthless, and our designs are likely to fail. For a perishable body weighs down the soul, and this earthly tent burdens the thoughtful mind. We can hardly guess at what is on earth, and what is at hand we find with labor. 
But who has traced out what is in the heavens? Who has learned your counsel unless you have given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high? And thus the paths of those on earth were set right, and people were taught what pleases you, and were saved by wisdom. The word of the Lord. The response to our psalm, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. have been our dwelling place in all generations. You turn man back to dust and say, turn back, you children of Adam, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past. Or like a watch in the night. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. You sweep them away, they are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. So teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Turn, O oh Lord, how long have compassion on your servants. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us, and prosper for us the work of your hands. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. Beloved, I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent, in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, 
so that you might have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus and he turned and said to them, whoever comes to me and does not hate their father and mother, spouse and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even their life itself cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not first sit down and estimate the cost? to see whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going out to wage war against another king will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then while the other is still far off, He sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, whoever of you does not give up all their possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's first reading draws our attention to the depth of the wisdom of God and God alone knows God's intention for humanity. However, this intention has been fully revealed in Christ who willingly sacrificed himself in order to save us. And of course, in the gospel today, it's of difficult words. And Jesus today tells us the cost of discipleship, that we are serious in following him. He noted that discipleship demands big things from us. There's no halfway. It entails total dedication, perseverance, and commitment to Jesus, even in the extent of making him our first priority, even over family and loved ones. That's what he's getting at by saying that shocking phrase, you can't be my disciple unless you hate your mother and father, brother and sister. Now, of course, that language that Jesus used, of course, is different than our language today. It's not a good translation, the word hate. It's uh, in Jewish terms, it means prefer. The word that Jesus was using means to prefer family over me. Jesus is saying that as a disciple, we must prefer him even over our family. Those who come to me cannot be my disciples unless they love me more than their brother and sister and father and mother and children. He's saying that as followers of Jesus, our responsibility extends beyond our flesh and blood family, to the entire human family. Those who choose to be disciples of Jesus must be committed. They cannot allow other commitments to take priority. Of course, Jesus is speaking these words as he was heading to Jerusalem for his crucifixion. Disciple-all-subship also means detachment. We all have possessions, for sure. 
but this means detachment from any material possession, you know, that makes us free to follow Jesus, gives us room in our hearts for Jesus, frees us from the enslaving power of worldly possessions, so as to be able to enter the kingdom of God. As a disciple of Jesus, we must daily accept and even embrace the cross in our life, whatever that is, the sufferings in our life that come upon us. Christ teaches and calls us to learn to make sacrifice, to be more committed to our mission and our call for ministry to other people. So in the gospel today, that Jesus is saying that by being a disciple is not easy. It comes at great cost. It is really, you know, it, it's a very, you got to be serious about being a disciple of Jesus. There's no sitting on the fence. So we live in a culture today which often thinks our faith in Jesus is nonsense. And it often mocks our involvement in the church that we can come from family, and that can come from family and friends and coworkers. So it can cost a lot emotionally to be a practicing Christian today. Not a Christian, but a practicing one. That is our persecution today. Friends and even some of our closest relatives may get uncomfortable if we try and share something of our faith with them. If we dare speak of the guidance of God and his church giving us a moral compass or of the hope it offers us in times of darkness. It's not easy. When we experience that discomfort, our fate seems to generate, it is easier to stay silent, isn't it? It is some ways understandable why we might decide to just come to Mass on Sunday and keep quiet about our faith the rest of the week. But that's not the challenge of Jesus today. You might think it is obvious that Jesus is the center of our faith. And I think we easily leave Jesus in the background because it's more comfortable for him to be there. Our priority in life must be to Jesus and his work of completing God's kingdom on earth. And Jesus says it's not enough to give top priority to God's kingdom. We must live that priority every day, no matter the cost, no matter the inconvenience. Unless we are willing to take up our cross and follow Jesus in our daily living, we cannot be his disciple. That's what it said in the gospel. No, we might make only a microscopic dent in all the problems of the world. But we know that the worst thing to do and the worst evil to do is to do nothing because we think we can do so little. We're here together, you know, at this Mass, this Holy Eucharist, to thank God for God's love and goodness and wisdom for us. We gather in prayerful support of one another and to ask God to keep, to give us courage, to open our hearts to the courage, grace, and generosity we need to remain faithful to our commitment to Jesus every day. And that commitment means looking at one another with the eyes of faith, with the eyes of Jesus Christ. St. Paul, that's a beautiful second reading, St. Paul says, shows this, he became a friend to Onesimus, a runaway slave of Philemon, one of the disciples that we're talking about now in the ancient days of Greeks. Paul looked at Onesimus not as a slave, but as a brother, a friend, and he also encouraged Philemon, his friend, to love Onesimus as a brother. We can learn from St. Paul in this reading that being a disciple of Jesus means treating each one of us, child, adult, man or woman, with the eyes and the heart of Jesus the loving, the caring, and the compassionate heart of Christ. So as we continue our celebration today, let us assess our lives as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Have we made Jesus Christ the center of our lives? What cost are we willing to pay to be called a disciple of Jesus Christ today? Please stand as we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us turn now in faith in great trust in our Heavenly Father to hear and answer all the prayers in our hearts today. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Peter, our Archbishop, that the Holy Spirit may continue to give them the wisdom and courage to lead the people of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our archdiocese, as we continue the process of restructuring and renewal, that the Holy Spirit will continue to be with us and guide us during these difficult times of challenge and change. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that during the season of creation, beginning September 1st to October the 4th, that we listen to the voice of creation, show respect for the earth, our common home, and move towards developing lifestyles that are more respectful of the environment. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, especially in the Middle East and in Ukraine, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our seminarian, Chris Quigley, that the Holy Spirit will be with him on his journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all teachers and students as they begin a new school year, that they may be blessed with success, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the healing power of the Holy Spirit for all of the sick in body, mind, and spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all of our departed loved ones, especially Maureen Ryan and Phyllis Preston, that they may rest in the peace of the risen Jesus we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for the prayers, pray some, all the prayers in the quiet of our hearts today, our own intentions today. Also add to our intentions, Kevin and Marie Dormady, who will be celebrating, they are celebrating their 60th anniversary today. God bless them. And we hope that they will enjoy the peace, the friendship of Jesus forever. We pray to the Lord. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the grace and blessings you give us every day. We make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, but through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, but through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink.
wash away our iniquity, O Lord, cleanse us of our sins. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through your word and your spirit you called all things into being, that your love might be reflected in the vastness of the universe, in the beauty of land and sea, and in the diversity of people who bear your image. Yet your gifts of nature did not exhaust your goodness. For the fullness of your love was only revealed when you sent your only begotten Son for our salvation and poured out your Spirit to gather us into one as your own. And therefore with the great company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth, are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. And therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, 
whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look at favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life to your Spirit and grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion together with Francis our Pope and Peter our Bishop, with all our bishops, priests, deacons, and your entire people. Grant that all of the faithful of the Church looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us to, attentive to the needs of all people, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the fullness of, of resurrection, give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is ended, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with all the apostles and martyrs, St. John the Baptist, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, it says to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We share that peace of Christ now with one another.
And behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my soul. My soul shall be. Spiritual communion for those viewing online and for those who cannot receive Holy Communion at this time. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you for you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. For the reception of Holy Communion, we ask that you begin from the side sections, maintain a two meter distance in the communion line, and sanitize your hands before receiving Holy Communion. Thank you. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Our communion hymn can be found in your celebrating song, 6.6, .6, One Love Released. One bread, one body, one cup, one call, one faith, one spirit. Present in our soul, one prayer, one blessing, one hope, one peace, one church, one people, one love released, one bread, one body. Present in our soul, one prayer, one blessing, one hope, one peace, one church, one people, one love released. Is not this bread we share? the body of our Lord. Is not this wine we drink, the blood of Christ outpoured? One bread, one body, one cup, one call, one faith, one spirit, Present in our soul, one prayer, one blessing, one hope, one peace, one church, one people, one love released. I am the bread of life. Eat and you shall live. To those who share this meal, my strength I'll always give. One bread, one body, one cup, one call, one fish. One spirit present in our soul, one prayer, one blessing, one hope, one peace, one church, one people. Spread. 
A couple of things from the bullet. Number one, uh, our monthly uh, adoration and confessions will happen on Saturday, September 17th from 7 to 9. Of course, our usual time for confessions uh, would be Friday and Saturday, which happens every week. Unless there's a funeral, usually it's between 11 and 12 on Friday and Saturday for confessions. And uh, adoration. And adoration occurs pretty well every day from Tuesday to Saturday from 11 to 12 in the Marian Chapel. So you can come by and just go into the chapel for a little prayer and reflection for yourself if you want to do that uh, any day. As you know, the parish, central parishes of, Saint, of the Basilica, St. Pius X, St. Patrick's, and St. John Bosco will be amalgamated into one parish gathered here at the Cathedral Basilica of St. John the Baptist. So I met many people from other parishes as well, and you're certainly all welcome here. The parish, in a modern sense, is where you worship, 
not geographically. So we welcome, we've always had people in the Basilica from as far away as CBS all the way down to Mount Pearl, everyone, they come back here uh, and be involved in ministry. So if you'd like, give us your contact information, like to register, and it doesn't mean, oh, I'm registered at the Basilica, and whatever, you know. We'd like to have your contact information, your emails and things like that, so that we can keep you informed of what's going on and things like that. It would help us to communicate better. So in your bulletin today, there is a registration form, and at the back of the church, you can pick it up as well. And one of the things on the form is that we're trying to figure out, okay, what did you do in your last parish? Were you a, were you a Eucharistic minister? Were you a lector or reader? Uh, were you on some committees in the parish? We'd like to know so that hopefully when you come here to our basilica, you will be able to use your gifts and talents in our parish here. So we'd like to know what you be. And if you haven't been and you would like to learn about some ministry or be involved, I'd like to know. And then we'll, we'll contact you and try to fit you into a schedule here if you're... You, if you were a sacristan in another parish, again, you can certainly, you're all welcome here to use your gifts and talents at the Basilica in our new amalgamated parish, okay? So I wrote this uh, little note that I'm putting in the bulletins uh, this week, and I'll just read it to you. I welcome all parishioners to the Roman Catholic Cathedral Basilica of St. John the Baptist as your future place of worship, of faith formation, and of outreach. This is a challenging time of change and transition for all of us in the Archdiocese of St. John's. And everyone I talk to, it's a painful thing. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you will find a friendly welcome here. We all have different stories and talents and gifts, and we, are hope, we hope to hear, share them with each other. In our new amalgamated parish, we will have many ministries, committees, and activities in which you can be involved, and we are open to your ideas as well. Please call or email the parish office for any assistance you might need. I welcome all of you with an open heart. So no matter what parish you were in before, you are certainly welcome here to be part of our Basilica family. It's a big church. It's hard to welcome everyone, but we do our best here to make sure we kind of find out who people are and what's going on. So we have good volunteers, and we need you people to be volunteers as well, to be ushers, to welcome people in from everywhere. So. Please join us and please use your gifts and talents and bring them with us, to us from you. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. I invite Kevin and Marie to come forward. Kevin and Marie have been such great parishioners at the Basilica here over the years. Uh, Kevin was involved in many aspects of our <clears throat> financial committees, parish councils, archdiocesan councils and committees. And Marie has been trying to make us a few bucks down in the parish parish store. <laughs> Marie has been working and organizing that parish store for years. So today they celebrate their 60th wedding anniversary. So I have a little blessing for them today. Let us raise our hands in blessing over the couple. We praise you, O God, who bless, we bless you, creator of all things, who in the beginning made man and woman that they might form a communion of life and love. We give you thanks for graciously blessing the family life of your servants, Kevin and Marie, so that it might present an image of Christ's union with the church. Therefore, look at kindness upon them today, and as you have sustained their communion amid joys and struggles, 
renew their marriage covenant every day, increase their charity and strengthen in them the bond of peace, so that together with the circle of their children that surrounds them, they may forever enjoy your blessing through Christ our Lord. And also uh, for them, we have received from the blessing of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for the occasion. So here you go. Yeah, yeah, I'll get in the Can I face the camera? We'll go down here. All right. Great. God bless you. God bless. Have a good day. I may. May Almighty God bless all of us to gather here in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Our missioning hymn this morning, number 435 in your Catholic Book of Worship, Lift High the Cross, 435. <clears throat>